All right, guys, it's Matt Eldred here with Matt's Wild Point of View. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about hill style bows or straight limb bows. As you can see, that's a straight standing bow. They're generally pretty tall. This is a 68 inch bow. This is a Great Northern's traditional longbow. It's a fantastic bow. It's got trapped limbs, which means that they, they gradually taper down to the belly of the bow so that it's narrower on the inside than it is on the outside, basically, making a very forgiving, fast, accurate bow that feels good in the hand. Um, we're going to go over accuracy. We're going to go over some myths about these bows being uh, sluggish or <clears throat> very hand shocky. Um, and we're also going to go over just general purpose use of these bows. Um, obviously, length is going to give you some issues in the tree stand things like that but they're absolutely fabulous to hunt with i'll show you what these bows look like strung up and then we're going to get started with this video so that's the profile of a, a strung hill style bow very simple extremely simple but these things are uh i would call them elegant that's that's a good word for them elegant <laughs> If you're looking for speed and things like that on traditional equipment, you're kind of missing the point anyway. These bows are quiet. They seem to uh, um, take a lot of different spined arrows very well. Um, I do spine my arrows to my bow, so these are spined quite well out of this bow. But they, uh, they're super smooth because of the length, and they're also super stable. Stable bows are super important, and the length of a bow adds in stability, which these hill style bows are almost always a super forgiving bow. Meaning, if you see, for example, I will purposely show some bad form here, and you'll still hear no arrow slap coming off the riser or anything like that. Um, I'll shoot all cockeyed, and I'll also shoot with a short draw, but. It has a fairly bad release too, but this bow shoots great no matter what. So stay tuned. Today we're going to talk all about the Hill Style Bow. This is actually made by uh, Great Northern Archery. It's their traditional longbow. But I want to show you guys that, like, even with a straight limb bow like this, speed is is not an issue. I, I, I see so many people on uh, social media saying that they don't shoot these bows because they're afraid. You know, they want they want the most speed. You know, and they think these things are slow and, and sluggish, but. A well-designed bow is a well-designed bow. I don't care if you're shooting a recurve bow. I don't care if you're shooting reflex, deflex, straight limb bow. This bow, I think, has right around an inch of setback, so it does have some performance. But basically, this is a straight limb bow, just a D bow, hill style. And I'm going to show you a little bit of accuracy, and also show you a little bit about how fast this thing shoots with these wooden arrows in it. And these are. 190 grain tips on here.
So as you can see, these are not lacking in speed at all. Like everybody likes to say, these are great bows, super forgiving. They allow for a lot of shooter error. And if you shoot like me, you need something that's gonna be forgiving. It looks like I, I smoked this target here and I nicked this one twice, which on moving targets, which I personally always try to practice on during the off season when I'm not focused on hunting, I'm focused on practicing on targets that are constantly moving. But and it, I might as well mention that too. Something as easy as twine and a pine cone is great because it's light enough that the wind can blow this even on a day like today when there's not a lot of wind it's still light enough that it picks it up and moves it around now the reason i do that is because practicing on a target that's just got circles you really zone in on, on picking one spot on, on a target and you can shoot that target fine but that's just not realistic as far as hunting situations i've rarely been in a hunting situation where a deer walked up or a squirrel walked out or a rabbit ran by or a turkey came strutting up and they had a bullseye on them. It just doesn't, doesn't happen, you know? So you need to learn to pick something that is gonna make you focus on picking a spot. Pine cones are great because they have a lot of variation of color on them, like a wild animal does. If you can see that, there's a lot of places where the pine pitch is on there. That helps you be able to pick something on your target. Now, as these are swinging around, that really lets me focus hard on a spot. I'm about 18 to 20 yards out shooting at these, but that's just one thing that I wanna tell you guys that is uh, helped me in, in hunting situations. I don't do 3D tournaments or anything, but this is practice that'll help you in real life hunting situations, and hopefully that helped you out. All right guys, there you go. That is a real life speed test <laughs> on these bows. I, I don't have a conograph. I don't care to know exactly the speed. If you're worried about a couple sec feet per second, you really shouldn't be shooting traditional bows. You should be shooting a compound because that's where you're gonna get all that speed that you're worried about. But you know, when I shot this arrow, the first one that missed and shot to the left here, I noticed that that's 125 grains. That would be my accuracy problem with that because these two that hit target are obviously, I don't know if you can see that, but these ones are the 190 grains I was talking about. You can see the difference there. Anyway, this, this is a, a really good video to show you guys that if you're afraid of buying one of these because you think you're gonna have a slow bow and you think that um, your buddies are going to outperform you with their reflex deflexes and recurves. You're absolutely fooling yourself. A well-crafted bow is a well-crafted bow. Great Northern makes a great traditional longbow. I know Northern Mist makes a great traditional longbow in these hill styles. Um, and there's many, many companies that make great bows. If you shot one of these, like I said earlier, if you shot one of these and you got hand shock and you had a sluggish bow, it was a poorly designed bow. But hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit if you're thinking about buying one of these or thinking about shooting one.
All right, guys, I wanted to do another short video while I had the bow out, um, just of how forgiving these bows are. Um, and another thing I wanted to talk about is wooden arrows. These, I'll bring the camera over here in a second so you can see this group, but wooden arrows are every bit as accurate as any, any, any other arrow, aluminum, carbon, I don't care what you're shooting. <clears throat> it's, it's the spine that matters. You need to spine your arrows to your bow. You know, whether you're shooting aluminum, carbon, wood, bamboo, I don't care. You need to spine your arrows. But this bow right here is absolutely forgiving. I can shoot this, for, as you can see from about any position, get the exact same accuracy. Um, I can't really, I can't really speak for every hill style bow but I can speak for the Great Northern bows. They're absolutely fantastic bows to shoot. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if you have any questions, if you wanna see me shoot any more targets or you got any ideas for some trick shots or anything like that, go ahead and uh, send me a message. I'd be happy to probably accomplish it if I have the stuff to do it. <clears throat> All right, guys, obviously, with the overall length of this bow, you're gonna to wanna to pick a tree if you're hunting out of a tree stand that doesn't have a lot of branches. This, this tree is perfect. I got plenty of clearance. I can pretty much draw, I can pretty much shoot out of any direction of my shooting zone here without having to worry about hitting any limbs or anything like that. So hunting wise, is it the most convenient bow to be in a tree with? I would have to say no, it's definitely not the most convenient bow to be in a tree with. Can you do it? Absolutely. If you pick the right tree, you can hunt all day, every day with these bows out of the tree stand. They're plenty fast, they shoot plenty powerful. <clears throat> One thing I want to talk about in a hunting situation with these bows Bows that use a lot of limb when, when throwing an arrow, I call it throwing an arrow, some people call it cast. When casting an arrow, a bow that uses a lot of moving limb is gonna hold, it's gonna hold its cast a lot better at different distances. So these bows using such long limbs even if they're not as zippy and fast as a short recurve bow, these bows hold their cast extremely well over long distances. There's just too much working limb here. There's too much limb in the blind with you trying to uh, maneuver around all the brush and anything that might be on the ground, any debris, anything that's hanging overhead. These bows are probably not gonna be your best choice for that. Now, can it be done? Yeah, it definitely can be done. People have been doing it forever. As you can see, I can shoot out of here just fine. Would it be my first choice for a, a bow to use out of a ground blind? It absolutely would not be. Um, not only is it long, it does it catch on everything, but what happens when you have such a long string on a bow is the string angle. So you have to worry about that string angle catching on things as well, not just your bow limbs, but also the string angle. Long bows and ground blinds are just typically really tough to uh to accomplish it can be done you can build your blind like i kind of have moved some stuff here you can move you can you can maneuver your blind in order to match your bow but what you're giving up is a lot of stealth you're giving up a lot of camouflage you're giving up a lot of what's behind you um lot you know to kind of shroud you from that deer or whatever the game might be that you're hunting 
you're, you're giving up a lot of your, your natural camouflage to accommodate having this long of a bow in a ground blind. So can it be done? It can be done, but typically I would not. All right, guys, if I had to pick a, a, a way to hunt off the ground with a hill style bow, unlike the brush that I was just in that was catching all over in my bow, making it complicated to do things, I would choose tall grass in an open area like this. You really gotta pick your battle zones for the equipment that you're with. And if I was gonna be trying to get close to an animal and not mess up my shot with a hill style bow, an area like I'm in right now would be absolutely perfect. That's, this would definitely be the number one type of uh, ground hunting that I would do with this bow because I have plenty of movement here, but I also have plenty of stealth here. I can I could get back in this grass a little bit more than I am now, but you guys wouldn't be able to see me on video, so that'd be kind of pointless. But if I was back in this about 10 feet with this bow, I would still be absolutely fine to shoot. And I would also absolutely be able to uh, maneuver this bow in different directions, which is huge when you're hunting game. You think they're gonna be in front of you, but they might not be. They're gonna be where they wanna be, basically. So put yourself in a game rich environment like I'm in right now, but also put yourself in an environment that you can maneuver your bow if you have to. This is absolutely perfect for shooting. It's just a killer spot. Now I'll go back here a little bit to show you guys exactly how well camouflaged I could be with this bow and still be able to get plenty of shots off if need be. All right, guys, now hopefully that little bit of movement right there proves a point. Obviously, I can't do any filming from here, but you can see I still have plenty of movement with this bow. I'm not moving a bunch of brush. Hopefully, you can see the top of the bow moving. That's on purpose, but I'm not knocking around a bunch of brush trying to accomplish a shot with this bow. So what I'm getting at is these are absolutely acceptable to hunt off the ground with if you're in the right environment to do so. Choose your environment and choose the bow you're gonna, you're gonna hunt with that day. Um, obviously, <clears throat> tall grass is, you know, it, it, I don't care where you're, where you're at in the country, I don't care where you're at in the world, tall grass holds animals. It's bedding, it's a food source, and if you can get a bow in there that is this big then you can get any bow in there so yes a hill style bow is perfect for hunting off the ground in the right environment in open pine woods like i'm in right now is also another perfect environment for a long limb bow um howard hill used to say you act like you're picking up a suitcase um, and that's a pretty good pretty good example and he was by far one of the best shots there is another thing that i want to explain you can see how i'm holding the bow straight but the arrow's angled the arrow's pointing to the um, left of the bow that's because most of these bows are not cut on center i i really don't know any hill style bow that's absolutely center shot so your, your arrow is going to veer off to one side, meaning that the arrows that you shoot out of this bow have to be spined properly. They're probably going to be a little bit weaker spined than you're used to shooting out of your center shot bows and things like that because they have to bend around this riser. That's Archer's Paradox. We'll get into that in a different video. But I just wanted to explain a couple of different things. If you're not used to shooting this, this style of bow if you're a self bow shooter i would have to say uh transition from a self bow to a hill style bow would be fairly simple now if you're used to shooting recurves and stuff you're not going to be shooting with that low wrist anymore like i am here 
you're going to be shooting with a closed low or with a high risk sorry you're going to be shooting with a different a different style altogether then you're going to have a, a different grip on that bow and you're going to have to be able to get used to that but other other than that i don't think that affects the shootability of these bows at all all right guys i really hope you enjoyed that video on the uh, hill style bow straight limb bow d bow whatever you want to call it the limbs are straight and it's generally over 64 inches long um, if you guys want to know any more information on a bow like this of this particular design or on this great northern bow itself contact me and i'd be happy to give you any, any information you want to know on that now next time we go over different designs of bows we're gonna go over this little bow right here this is the complete opposite end of the spectrum as far as uh long long bows go this is a pretty much a hybrid it's almost got a recurve style grip on it um, it's a three piece instead of a one piece it's it's much shorter uh, 58 inch ammo on this um it's fast we're gonna go over all the benefits of this we're gonna go over the benefits of having a three-piece we're gonna go over some disadvantages as well um this particular bow is uh i'm using because it is the complete opposite end as far as long bows as that that is a higher end bow and um the price tag reflects that this is about as bottom of the barrel price tag as you can get i've just done some things to spruce this bow up but if you guys want to see uh, a video on this bow and bows of this design and their benefits, make sure you stay tuned. If you guys like the videos I'm putting out about the outdoors and archery, hunting, planting gardens, and uh, just general outdoorsmanship, make sure you stay tuned. Share this with your friends. Um, subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time.